Coming up next on Central Illinois World War II Stories, we'll feature an interview with Theodore Freeman of Rantoul and learn about his incredible journey aboard the USS Missouri. I was on my way to Sunday school. I was, I was a Pentecostal pastor. I heard the announcements. The Japanese at Pagboro Hall. At that time, I hadn't been in service. Signed up in 43. I know the words say, thou shall not kill. But I was in war. You do whatever you have to do in order to protect yourself. Theodore Freeman's role as pastor was put on hold when he decided to take leave and serve his country during World War II. Freeman joined the Navy went through basic training and was assigned to the battleship, the USS Missouri. His rank, steward mate first class. At this time, it was the Navy's official policy of enlisting African Americans, primarily for service in the non-white stewards branch. We served the officers, so we had to make sure that they had their meal. I will set up Gary and we would serve them each individual. Stewards serving in the Missouri Mess Hall were constantly on alert and prepared to fight the enemy. If they haul them, man, regardless of what you're doing, you had to forget that and go man your station, for which I was on a 40 millimeter gun barrel up on a 16 inch mount. Your gun mount moves around, so you got to be able to be swift to move with it. Moving from the mess hall to the front line during an attack by a Japanese kamikaze pilot remains etched in his memory. This suicide mission was caught on film by Navy Seaman Lynn Schmidt at 2.43 p.m. on April 11th, 1945. The Japanese pilot hit the Missouri, splitting his plane in half just a few feet away from the young Pentecostal preacher. They sent out a suicide squad. He missed his target, and in missing his target, he hit his 20 millimeter gun barrel, stuck in one of a 40 millimeter gun barrel, and half of him came aboard in one of the wings. He caught on fire. Somebody hollered, put him out. A little holler, let him burn but they did put him out. The closest I got was these, about two feet from him. But I knew he couldn't do nothing because he just did have his arms. The other part was going in the water. And we man, I was stationed for a good, at least an hour or two after then, in case of something else would happen. At times I was scared, and at times uh, I was, well, I'm out here now, so I just have to do the best I can and hope enough to do enough that I can get back without any trouble. No one died that day except the Japanese pilot. After part of the body was recovered, Captain Callahan held a military funeral aboard the ship. Stirred by his self-sacrificing mission, Callahan believed the kamikaze deserved military honor and respect. Crew members were ordered to wrap the pilot's body and bury it at sea. America, let us bow our heads in prayer to pay tribute to Franklin Delano Roosevelt. America had lost its legendary leader. And President Roosevelt passed in. We didn't know how things was going but we continue to stay tight, ready, and this way we was able to represent uh, him, respecting him, and also giving space and time on the ship. All the crew, I would say, all was sad. They stayed up, you know, silent for sadness for him passing. Freeman survived the kamikaze attack, the passing of President Roosevelt, 
And finally, yet another important moment in World War II history was about to take place aboard the Missouri, the monumental signing of the peace treaty with the Japanese ending World War II. It was September the 2nd, 1945. Dylan MacArthur, Admiral Halsey, and Chester Lemon, and as they come forth, uh, they made sure they watch each person go and sign the peace treaty. And then they had the Japanese came and signed. I was able to see everything that went on and see them as they signed and signed the peace treaty. After the war, came back to the church then they all greeted me and saluted me. Uh, then from there, I just continued up uh, preaching. I took the man along with me, so I didn't have much fear.